I'm joined by former White House press secretary and host of The Sean Spicer Show, Sean Spicer. Sean, thanks so much for joining me on The U.S. Report. President Biden has welcomed Xi Jinping to the U.S. for the APEC summit in San Francisco. The two letters, leaders met in an effort to thaw tension. Now, Biden has hailed the talks as success, touting agreements on curbing fentanyl production and restoring military communications. But how did you rate the trip and the summit? Well, James, it's actually interesting. There were two things that I thought were telling about this. One is they defined success by whether or not Xi Jinping would take President Biden's phone call. I mean, it was like, you need to unblock me on social media. You need to be my friend again. <laughs> that was the definition of success. I mean, literally, you won't take my call anymore. That was how bad. And remember, Joe Biden was supposed to be the foreign policy guy, the guy that was going to reset our relationships with countries around the world after disastrous four years of Donald Trump. And yet, here he is, not able to get a phone call returned from President Xi. Then, and you saw this, every aspect of this trip was completely scripted, down to what flowers were out, how high the grass was cut. And he scripts it to, to the nth degree. And then Biden walks off stage, off of that press avail that he does. And he's almost off stage, and he turns around to the reporters and asked that one question that his staff was gonna cringe on, will you still call Xi Jinping a dictator? And he says, yes, he's a dictator. Undermines every ounce of planning that was done. Immediately, the Chinese put out a statement saying that that was politically corrosive. And here we go. If the entire goal was to get the relationship back on track, which is pathetic that that's what it was, you just blew it by an offhanded comment. Yes, Xi Jinping's a dictator, don't get me wrong. But the idea that Biden blew it, it's just he literally got in his own way to, to hit a bar that was unbelievably low, James. Well, Sean, I mean, come on, you say that, uh, you know, you cast some aspersions on Joe Biden's foreign policy expertise, but look at how much better and more safe the world has become in the last three years since Donald Trump. Seriously. You're not, but, I can't tell, are you talking about North Korea? I can't. Are you talking yeah, exactly. About Taiwan, exactly. China, Russia and Ukraine. I can't keep it straight, but none of those I know, were... But, but, but on this question of whether or not Xi Jinping is a dictator, I want to play this little bit here where we see him answer the question. But watch Anthony Blinken, the Secretary of State's face, as Joe Biden answers this question. Take a look at this. Mr. President, after today, would you still refer to President Xi as a dictator? This is a term uh, that you used earlier this year. Well, look, he is. I mean, he's a dictator in the sense that he, he is the guy who runs the country that is a communist country that is based on a form of government totally different than ours. You can almost see him physically in pain there as he said because, those you know, words. Why, though, because there's, there's two things. One, he said it. Blinken yeah. is sitting there saying, all of this, all of my hard work, my staff's hard work, precisely guiding every movement, every word, every image that was seen down the drain. But as I said, here's the kicker. Biden left the podium. He was done. He said, I'm not taking any more questions. And then he stopped, turned around, and took it. It was like all you, you were two steps away, two steps away from not screwing this up. And his secretary of state is sitting there saying, please just keep walking Joe. <laughs> and, and, and you know, it's so funny because, of course, Sean Spicer, we've played so many clips on this show of Joe Biden ignoring the press, sitting there, not listening, not saying anything. I just think he it's you know, the one time, the one time he shouldn't have, he did. But I want to talk, though, about some of the other politics that came out of this, because Xi Jinping said, on the one hand, in the communique that, and I thought this was a bit of a bit of a lie here, that great power competition was not the defining feature of the age, but Xi also gave a stern warning to the U.S. about arming Taiwan, and this would seem to me, the optics of that would be that Xi is almost sort of declaring that he's got the upper hand in the Pacific and in the relationship. What is the message you took away from all of that? Yeah, I was. I took away kind of what you're going towards, which is I think he was like, look, I just want to be clear. He said unification is something that we've always strived for. He made it very clear. I, I know what you in America are saying. I heard you, Joe Biden. But here's what we're doing anyway. And it may not be imminent, but this is our goal. We're going to do it and don't get in our way. And they didn't back down at all. They're, they were very clear about what their goal was. And I think that that was, the, the, none of the things that, that were said today 
it was like, yes, if you want to still have phone calls and we can talk and giggle, but we're still doing what we're going to do and we don't really care. That's the difference. There was no sense of China saying, okay, we got the message. We sent a spy plane over you. We've been provocative in the South China Sea. We get it. We've gone too far. We want to reset relationships. The, the dialogue today was very much like, hey, if you want to still talk, we're cool with talking, but we have an agenda and we're going to execute that agenda and we really don't care what you have to say. At the end of the day, they sat there and said, your only deliverable is that we have a phone call and that we're going to talk about climate change. Do you think that, I mean, here's the problem. The U.S. continues to negotiate with China as if they think that China cares. China doesn't care about climate change. Otherwise, they wouldn't be doing what they're doing. They know what they're doing causes damage to the environment. They know what they're doing undermines human rights. They don't care. It's not like they went, oh, my God, you know what, Joe, you're right. All these factories are actually doing damage to the environment. The way that we're treating people, you're right. It is kind of bad and nasty and inhumane. But I'm just glad you finally told me this because I just didn't know it until you shared that with me. And I was also, Sean, absolutely, I mean, amazed, I guess, what else were they going to do, that they had APEC in San Francisco, which, of course, as we know, is an open-air museum of dysfunctional oh. left-wing progressive politics. But what did you make of the incredible cleanup effort where they, I don't know how they got those streets cleaned up and bleached and sanitized, and they put up basically cages to keep people walking in the right areas? It was almost, you know— like a, it, it, like a sort of a Chinese totalitarian effort there to get uh, all of this done. What did you make of the way Gavin Newsom just said, yeah, look, the place was a dump, we cleaned it up, and I guess next week it's going to go back to being a dump again? You know, I think a lot of folks in Australia will relate to this, but sometimes you go down to the beach and you draw something in the sand and you build a sandcastle. And then the tide comes in and it washes it all away. That's literally what's gonna happen. They built something up, they made something pretty, the tide will come in, wash it all away, and it'll be back to how it's always been. But that's what they did. What a waste of money. It was, an, I mean, I cannot believe of all the places in the US that you could have showcased, you chose San Francisco. It is, it smells gross. The people, I mean, like, if, if anyone who's been there recently, it's a disaster what that city has become. And so, What's an even bigger disaster? A, they pushed everyone out to like a periphery where no one could see. So all you had to do was like go over one. It was actually, the funny thing is, it was very much like China. I've been, when I served in the Bush administration, I traveled over there a few times. They would clean up stuff within the bounds that everybody would operate in. But if you ever asked anyone outside the boundaries, they would tell you it's still as bad as it was, you know, the day before. They just pushed it out for a day or two. By next week, it's gonna all look the same again. What a waste of money. And it was actually, I think, a disservice. It was pretty much the Chinese seeing how we do what they do. We come in, we clean up a city, we make it look nice while everybody's there, and then it goes back to the way it was the second that the cameras are gone. 